St. John chapter 4 and verse 4 reads like this. And he must needs go through Samaria. Speaking of Jesus. And then in Acts chapter 17 verse 16 it says, Now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. What I'm going to share with you for a little while this morning is I must needs go. When we say we must do something, it kind of takes it to another level. You know, it's not just a, a, a thought. It's not just something that we maybe ought to do. But when, when Jesus says, I must needs go, that means that it is absolutely necessary for him. Now, I, I would ask maybe uh, for a little show of hands, is there anybody here that gets pretty busy? You know, have kind of a busy life. You know, well, you know, I totally, I totally get that because I have a pretty busy life. Nothing wrong with that, but understand this, that Jesus, of all people, had a very busy life. He had a lot to do. He had a world to save. He had a cross to get to. He had some people that really needed things all over the place, and he wanted to get to as many of them as he could, and he didn't have a, a, a four-wheel truck. He didn't have anything to ride in. <laughs> he walked most everywhere he went, so he was a very busy person. But this setting that we shared with you, he says, you know, he's going from uh, Anon near to Salem, which is where John was baptizing with water. And he was going to go over into Galilee, which is just north of where he was, right on, in, right on across the border of Judea into Galilee. And then he says, I must need to go through Samaria. Now, if you look at a map, and this is important, this, I want to share this with you. But if you look at a map of where Jesus was when he said that, Galilee was north, but the, the well of Sychar, the place where he was had this appointment that where he said he must needs go was south. So Jesus went out of his way to get to Samaria. He said, I must needs go to Samaria. You see, there was something about that meeting that he was going to have that was very important to him. And what I want you to get on this is now, you know, Jesus says, I must needs go. And many times we'll hear something that Jesus says, and we kind of put him in a, we put him in a different place. We kind of put him in an elevated place in our mind, and of course, that's where he belongs. But I also want you to know that we are to use Jesus as an example, that the things that Jesus do, did, he wants us to do. We are his hands and feet in this world. I know you've heard that before. He must needs go. He said, I must needs go. And so the reason I brought Paul into the picture is because Paul was not Jesus. Paul was an apostle of Jesus Christ. He was a follower of Jesus Christ. You and I are not Jesus, but we are followers of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that Paul was at Athens, and that of course, that rings a very special uh, note to me for having been there in Greece. And I know where Paul was. He was on Mars Hill, which is right up by the Acropolis in the city of Athens, which is a huge metropolis in Greece, the biggest city and the most uh, three-quarters of the whole population right there. And Paul was there. And the Bible says that while he waited in Athens for a couple more of the disciples... The Bible says that his spirit was stirred when he saw that the whole city was given to idolatry. I want you to notice there, you got two different scriptures. You got Jesus saying, I must need go because of an appointment that he had with a Samaritan woman. And then you got Paul as he's observing what's going on around him. His, spirits, his spirit gets stirred and it stirs him to action. So you got two things. Jesus said, I must needs go, so he goes to this well. And you got Paul 
uh, getting stirred because of him seeing in Athens all of the Greeks that with their mythology and all of their gods, all of the shrines that they had and all of the statues, the great statues and such as that. He was stirred in his spirit. Well, there is an application for us today. We're living in a world, if you look around, if you look at the world and you, you look at it, uh, you got to understand how to look at it. Yes, there's an overwhelming uh, sense of idolatry. Yes, there's a lot of things that are being worshipped other than God. But we as children of God must go. We as children of God have to see the need and see the urgency and actually be willing to go out of our way like Jesus was when he went to that well at noontime in Sychar to meet a woman that was an outcast. First of all, she was a Samaritan and the Jews avoided Samaria as much as they could because they didn't get along. Jesus was a Jew. This woman was a Samaritan and she was shocked when he even talked to her. She said, how is it you being a Jew? Talk to me, a Samaritan. But what she didn't know at first was who she was talking to. You see, this Jesus has to get into somebody's life and sometimes they don't even know about him. Well, there's where we come in. We take Jesus to them. The Apostle Paul was stirred in his spirit and he began to talk to the Jews in the synagogue and he began to talk to the, uh, the leaders around and these, these smart people, the Greeks were very smart, but he began to reason with them about Jesus Christ and preach to them. It, but the key is that he was stirred, that he was moved with the urgency. He didn't just ignore it, and he wasn't just overwhelmed by it. There's a lot going on in our world right now. There's a lot of chaos in our world right now. We don't deny that at all. But we cannot look at it and say that God cannot do something about it. And furthermore, God is going to do something about it when he moves on us to do something about it. He's going he's to move on us to do little things that make a lot of difference. When Paul began to preach in Athens, this was just a part of that, of that area. But it, but it had a rippling effect that went all through Greece. You see, the smallest act of kindness, the smallest deed that you do in the name of Jesus Christ can have the greatest effect. It's time that we just rise up and begin to do. It's just time for us to go. I must needs go. Because there's people that don't know Jesus. They don't know who he is. Therefore, how can they know that they need him? And he's going to use you. And see, Jesus went out of his way. And this is, this is something he'll do now. Usually when we talk about this uh, Samaritan woman, we talk about how... how how the Lord came to her and how she didn't, she was the least of the least. In other words, she was uh, society's outcast. She couldn't even come to the well at the same time as everybody else. They didn't come at noon to draw water. That was early in the morning, but because she was rejected by society, she, wasn't, she didn't even get to come to the well when everybody else did. She came at noontime. Well, this day when she came, Jesus was sitting on the well. She was about to have a meeting <laughs> with a master. How, how many people are they that feel so outcast in society? How many, the lowest of the low in their own hearts and minds, maybe because of something that they've done. That's not the point. The point is that they need Jesus and that Jesus can help them and that you can be a part of Jesus helping them. But my, my point today is please don't get overwhelmed by the enormity of the task. Please don't get overwhelmed by, by what looks like such a landslide of evil. Because the smallest little deed done in the name of Jesus Christ is powerful. Heaven, heaven itself will reveal to us 
what your little acts of kindness might have done in somebody's life. We can look at the grand joys, we look at the grand scheme and the throngs and you know, we think about the masses and such as that, but God is interested in the individual. Yes, he is interested in you. And how many times have I come from this uh, subject, come from this setting to, to speak to an individual and, and sometimes individuals that already know Jesus Christ to tell you that if he would go out of his way like that to share with a Samaritan woman how much out of his way will he come to you to, to minister to you? But I'm going to give you a little key right here. One of the greatest ways for you to be ministered to, one of the greatest ways for you to shake off that heaviness, one of the greatest ways for you to shake off the attack of the enemy is to do something good for somebody else. That is, one, that is a key to being set free. Jesus went to this lady and he, he introduced himself to her. He walked, worked his way through all of her ideas about religion. He worked his way. He said, he said our fathers worshipped in this mountain. And yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, she came with her religious front. That's not, that's not what's going to get the job done with people. It's got to get beyond their ideas and introduce Jesus to them because he's the one that's going to make the difference. And guess what? He's living inside of you as a believer in Jesus Christ. And greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. It doesn't matter how, how, how rampant the evil might seem. It doesn't matter how dark the darkness might seem. A little bit of light dispels a lot of darkness. You could turn off every light in this place and cover up all the windows and it would be so dark you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. But if you lit one of these candles, you could see to go in this room. That's how much light makes the difference. And if the light is in you and you go to the darkness, but the key is... I must needs go. That's the urgency. Come on. Y'all know how it is. The more urgent we feel like something is, the more likely we are to do it. There's a sense of urgency. And now is a great time to strike while the iron is hot. <laughs> You've heard that one, haven't you? And God will do the work. You, put, you do the work. I mean, you, you go and let God take care of the results. You see what I'm saying? So there was an urgency to, to help this one individual. Now, Jesus knew the need. I want you to catch this because it's so, it's so applicable. Jesus knew the need when he... When he was sitting there on the well waiting for the woman to come, he already knew what she needed. Before you ever approach him, he already knows what you need. And many souls that you will minister to, as God leads you to do one little act of kindness, I'm not talking about some great evangelistic crusade I'm talking about just an act of kindness I'm talking about just showing a little concern just making a phone call or sending a text that's a popular one these days I'm talking about just reaching out just getting outside of ourselves oh we can get so caught up in our busy world we can get so caught up in our busy schedule but what are we missing? That's a good question for us to ask ourselves. So you see, Jesus knew the need, but sometimes the people that you try to minister to don't even know the need. They just know they're missing something, but they don't really know what they need. That's where Jesus comes in. When you shed the light, they begin to see that they need the light. When Jesus began to witness to this woman, when Jesus began to witness to this woman, 
and got past all of the religious jargon, she said, give me that water. And she wasn't just talking about this kind of water. <laughs> she was talking about living water. That's what she said. Give me that living water. She didn't even know she needed it first. But when Jesus revealed himself to her, she said, give me that water. And the same thing will happen with souls that you reach for. They may not even know that they need him at first, but as you show him to them and they get a glimpse of his greatness, they will, there will be a, an interest that is sparked because it's put there. That hollow spot has been put there that only God can feel. And Jesus must needs go. You need, I must needs go. And you take the word gospel and you, you take go out of it. <laughs> you don't have anything, right? I must needs go. So Jesus knew the need. Paul knew the need. And these, these sharp Greeks, you know, we'll read their works to this day, these philosophers and these, oh, they were some smart people. They were some intellectuals. But they were so too smart for their own good, evidently, because they didn't know who Jesus was. Or they wanted to be covered, so they, so they, they erected a... a a memorial, an idol, it says, to the unknown God, just in case there's one that we haven't mentioned. You know, we want to make sure we're covered here. You know, there was a spiritual desire in them, but they didn't know Jesus. And Paul knew Jesus. And he began to speak Jesus to them. And you know what? Some of them rejected him. But you know what? Some of them believed. And a lot of them believed. So what I'm saying to you is, it's just let God worry about the results. You just, you just reach for them in the smallest of ways. So there was the need. And then there was that action. And then there were some results results were this lady became a soul winner. <laughs> How many testimonies have you heard of people that didn't know the Lord, didn't know the Lord, and the next thing you know, somebody has come along and shared with them. I, I, there's, a, there's a pastor that I like to listen to on YouTube, and he was in college and was wild <laughs> as they could get. And somehow or another, I don't know exactly how this took place, but he, he decided he wanted to know more about the Bible. He didn't know Jesus, but he wanted to know more about the Bible, but the problem he said is that I didn't have a Bible. He wanted to know more, but he didn't have one, and he was on campus one day, and there was a man from an organization called the Gideons. Y'all heard of them? <laughs> Passing out Bibles. And then he had just he had just said that day, I need a Bible. And this Gideon is there and he hands him a Bible. He said, Well, now I've got a Bible, so I guess I can start a Bible study. <laughs> Didn't really know what he was, but hey, he just he was he was an athlete. He had he had some athletic friends, and some of them, I think some of them might have even been Christian, but he, he decided he was going to start a Bible study. And he did. He started a Bible study. And the next thing you know, the light started coming on. And he found Jesus in a great way. And that man has gone on to do great things for the Lord. All because of that. Now, I'm not doing a Gideon presentation right now, but I'm telling you that the Word of God will do that to somebody that didn't even know what they needed. And, it, and it, it shined, the light shined on them, and the next thing you know, they're soul winners. This lady came to the, she went back into the village where she was from, 
where, where so many looked down their nose at her and said, come and see a man that told me all that I ever did. Come and, come and meet this man. You see, that's, what, that's the way we, we reach people for Jesus. We say, come and meet this man. We just offer him. That's the greatest offering we have for this world. She turned out to be a soul winner. And then Apostle Paul, with his action, he had great results. They had revival in Greece. He went right on from Athens over to Corinth. One of, it was a port city, one of the wickedest places on the face of the earth. Idolatry, just you name it. He stayed there longer than he stayed anywhere. Got a job making tents with Priscilla and Aquila. Anybody familiar with First and Second Corinthians? Powerful stuff. One little act of obedience. I'm close with this story. True story. There was a minister that uh, God moved on him to go and preach in a certain at a certain location. Now, that, you know, this, this would have to be God. <laughs> he, he told him to go preach on this certain, in this certain place. This, I'm talking about outside, just go and preach a sermon. And so he goes to this place, and there's nobody there. And so he, he, he's thinking, and he's praying to the Lord. He said, Lord, did we get our signals mixed up? Did, 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 did the... Did the GPS take us to the wrong location here? I mean, sometimes it can do that, you know. But God's GPS is never wrong. And so he, and the Lord moved on him. He, he, he did. He told him, no, no, preach. He got, he stood there at that empty place over by a fence and began to preach. He came to the conclusion of his sermon and the Lord in moved on him to give an invitation. And I know this sounds too good to be true, but just listen, he, he gave an invitation. And around came this man from the other side of the fence. He never knew the man was there. But that man sat there on the other side of that fence and listened as he proclaimed Jesus Christ. He came around that fence and gave his life to the Lord Jesus Christ. One person. All that for one person. God knows exactly what he's doing. If we will just obey him, the sky is not even the limit as to what he will do. But the most important part is don't get fooled. Don't get to where you cannot see the tree for the forest. And yes, I said that backwards. Because sometimes you see the mass and you see the, the whole situation and we're bombarded with it, with social media and media and everything. We're just bombarded with, with some realities. We're not denying realities. But how does it make you feel? How do you respond? Do you respond with judgment? By saying, oh, they, those folks are so bad. I wish, you know, God, God, I, I think God ought to kill them. I, I think that would be a still to let God sort them out. Do you respond with overwhelmness? <laughs> That's, that may not be a word, but it fits, okay? Saying, I can't, what in the world can I do about that? This world is just gone to the underworld in a handbasket, right? I mean, do you, do you respond like that? Or can you look at the situation and see individuals? Because that's how God sees us. And have compassion. 
Because if we can have compassion and concern, we will be driven to prayer. We will be driven to reaching out. And that's where God wants us to be. To reach out. I must needs go. I wonder if in the closing moments of this service you could just talk to the Lord. Would you come back and play a little something, Louis? And say, here am I, Lord. Send me. I want you to weed through. I want you to, to, to break past any thoughts of, of lack. I want you to, I want you to break through any thoughts of inadequacy, any, any kind of thoughts that might hinder you right now and say, here am I, Lord, send me. In whatever way you choose, no matter how small, here am I, Lord, I make myself available because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The, the task that lies before us is no match for the power that lies within us. God is so powerful. Can we, can we let him introduce himself to others through us? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Just stand with me today. And as we... As we sing this final song, would you just talk to the Lord in your heart and say, Lord, here I am. Send me. Just move on me in small ways. Move on me in any way you choose. But here I am, Lord. Send me. Thank you.